Well, I think I will dive in. Uh, again, thank you everyone for being here tonight. And um, I, I really appreciate you jumping on this call. I know I, I would have liked to be out there at the, the fire station training room and uh, chatting with you in person, but uh, with the restrictions that we have, this is, uh, this is about the best I could do. So uh, again, I'm very thankful for everyone being on here. And uh, what I wanted to do tonight is just uh, share a little bit about my background, who I am, and uh, talk about why I'm running. And then, um, and then uh, I've had I've had a couple of people ask me, well, you know, what, what makes you qualified to run for county commissioner? So I thought I'd share some uh, some of my thoughts along those lines, and then um, and then I thought to just open it up to talk about uh, some Highlands issues and kind of where I am or where where I stand, where I think um, things should go with some of those issues, and certainly open it up and and take uh, take any feedback or questions from the crowd. So. Uh, with that in mind, um, uh, my name, as I'm sure you know, is Clay Mitchell. I'm running for county commissioner. And even though we have three different county commissioners that have to live in the different areas of the county, um, each of them is, each of the commissioners is elected by the, the county at large. So it's an at-large election. And um, I, am, I live in District 1, which is the Gold Hill, Virginia City, and west part of Mark Twain District. And so that is the seat that I'm running for. I am one of three candidates in this primary election that's coming up in early June um, on the Republican side. And then there is a fourth candidate who's running as a libertarian. And so he got a, got a pass straight through and he'll be joining into the general election uh, with whoever comes out of the primary. And so um, I, the, I did a a Facebook live broadcast last week about some of the things that are different about this election coming up because it's going to be all by mail and because we have same day voter registration for the first time. And so that is still linked on my page, I believe, um, which is Clay Mitchell for Story County Commissioner on Facebook. And so you're welcome to go watch the replay of that if you have any questions. Um, but key dates, they're going to be sending out ballots the first week in May is when they'll start. And then we will be, um, you can register or change your registration or uh, update your voter information by uh, in person or by, uh, by mail up to May 12th. And then up until June 4th, you can do it online. And then there will be early voting from, I believe, May 23rd to June 5th. And you can do in-person registration or changes during that time. So. A little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Sonoma County, and um, I had someone ask me if I was from Napa uh, when I talked about being from the North Bay, and I had to clarify for her that uh, Sonoma makes fine wine and Napa makes auto parts, just so we don't get it confused. And um, I have lived full time in Story County for the last six years, but the I've been involved in the county for almost a dozen years, and my first involvement in the county came back when I, uh, my, my dad and uncle bought the old Crown Point Mill down in Gold Hill. It was kind of a crazy real estate investment. I told them, look, if you buy it, I'll try to do something with it. And here I am a decade later still trying to do something with it. But that led to a job offer from Comstock Mining. They had acquired the Gold Hill Hotel and it was not performing particularly well. And so they invited me to come on and take a, first a job as as a, as a marketing manager, and then I rolled three months later into a general manager role and, uh, and turned it around, cranked up business about 25% in a year, just over a year, uh, year and three months, and then moved on to a couple other projects with them. One of the projects that I did was we launched a, a silver medallion made out of Comstock silver. Some of you may remember that for the sesquicentennial. And then uh, they ended up pulling the plug on that project, and so I worked a couple other jobs. I drove Uber and Lyft for full time for about a year and a half. I was at a point where I didn't want to bring my homework, my work home with me. I didn't want to supervise anyone. And so I just worked and uh, promoted Virginia City with everyone that I was driving around Reno or Tahoe, invited them to come up and, uh, and see our town. Um, after that, I, um, so prior to moving out here, I had, I, my background and what led to the job offer was uh, a good 10, 12 years of work in special events and hospitality. And so I left that behind when I moved here, but um, about three years ago, I resurrected the company that I had had two partners with, 
It's a small production company. We do lighting, sound, and music for uh, mostly weddings, but other events as well. And I built that back up to where it's, uh, it's rip-roaring, or at least it was until things got shut down this last month. But, um, but I, have, uh, I have about 40 events on, on the books for this year, and a lot of them are being postponed. We're doing the best we can to work with our clients and make sure that works. Now, I mentioned that because, number one, my background in marketing, I think, is a skill that will come in handy for the county. But also, I mentioned it because, um, because my, most of my work is outside of Story County. And I actually consider that as a, a benefit because it gives me independence. I don't feel I'm not beholden to anyone. I don't have to watch out or make sure that a, a controversial decision doesn't offend someone uh, because I don't rely on the county for my my living. And um, certainly I do, uh, I, I, I once things started happening with the shutdown, I immediately switched over camp. Traditional campaigning has been pretty tough. I'm not able to hold meetings and I don't really want to start conversations at your door. That just uh, kind of the wrong, the wrong idea to be kind of approaching people. And so I've been sending out letters, introducing myself. And, um, and I also got to work with some of the merchants here on main street and just said, what can I do to help my community? And so I put out a video that just uh, encouraged people to patronize the businesses that were still open and maybe jump, jump in and, and buy a, uh, you know, buy a gift certificate or something to help with the uh, keep some cash flow for the merchants that are here. And, um, and that video got five or 6,000 views. It was very successful in at least getting the word out that, Hey, we still have some, some restaurants that are open for curbside and little markets and things. So um, why did I decide to run for commissioner? I've had several people ask that. Why, why would you want to run for commissioner? So I don't know if you remember, but back about five, six years ago, there was a lot of talk. One of our commissioners uh, had proposed an idea to reduce everyone uh, residential property taxes as a way for us as residents to benefit from the, uh, the wealth, the tax revenue that was coming in from the business park. And that idea was pursued for a while and then it became clear that it was not feasible, it was not legal at the state level. The law did not allow for people to, uh, for the county to lower property taxes for just the residences uh, for the residential property and not to lower the property taxes for the commercial and industrial. And if they had done that, it would have, it would have, it would have killed the golden goose, so to speak. We wouldn't have gotten the revenue that we were hoping for. So about that time, my oldest son, I have four children. I have a rock star wife. She takes care of the, runs a, runs a tight ship with the house and, and really takes care of the kids and, and teaches them well. Um, my oldest was at se about seven at the time and he wanted to make some money. And so he, decided that he was going to have a lemonade stand. He was going to sell lemonade. And so in an effort to teach him about what was involved in going into business and how to do it right, I said, well, we probably should look into getting a business license if you're going to be making money here in town. And, um, and I knew that if it's during an event, you can go through the tourism commission and get a 25 or $50 license. So I figured if it was going to be outside of that, we should look and see what it is. So I went onto the county website and it turns out that for a home-based business, the initial first year fee for that business license is $175. Now, that really shocked me because in the town that I grew up in and started my first business in, um, it was a $20 annual business registration fee. And so that seemed a lot. And, and it goes down to $125. There's a $50 application fee, and then it's, it's, uh, it's $125 for the, for the remaining time. And the licenses go up from there. If, uh, if, you're, if you have a lot of employees, if you have a lot of square footage or some sort of high impact activity then, or a privileged license of some sort, then the, the cost goes up. And I was kind of blown away. And I reflected back on this effort and, and that we couldn't lower the property taxes. And I got an idea. And so I actually approached my commissioner at the time and I said, hey, I've got an idea that I'd love to float. And I'd love for the commissioners to consider this in a meeting maybe. I said, what if, as far as I know, business license fees are completely under the control of the county commissioners? You don't have to go to the state to get permission to change the business license fees. And I said, what if we were to take the, the basic fee for a home-based or a small startup business that's located here in the county, would charge the same or even more for those coming into the county to do business from somewhere else? But take that basic fee and drop it way down. Drop it down to 20 or 25 bucks. 
I think a couple of things would happen if we did that. Number one, there are probably a lot of small businesses that don't get a hobby businesses that don't get a business license because of the cost involved and they just kind of fly under the radar. And I think a lot of them would come out of the shadows, they'd get their business license and that would offset any revenue that the county would lose. Now that being said, the county doesn't really depend on the business license fees, especially from these very small businesses. It's not a, it's not a massive, it's not a big portion of the county's revenues. And so the second thing that it would do is it would lower the barrier to entry and it would encourage people to locate their businesses here. It would encourage people to locate home businesses here. If they move here, they could feel comfortable that it's a very low barrier to entry to get started with the business. And finally, it would not only put a hundred bucks back into the pocket of these small business owners here in town and around throughout the county, people who have home-based businesses and people who have the small shops here, but but it would put some real teeth behind the concept that we are the business friendliest county in the state, which we have heard over and over again. And it's certainly true for the big companies that have come here. The state has given them great incentives to come and, and be part of our community. And yet we have a bit of a barrier here and it's not exactly cheap to get started for a very small business. And the response that I got when I shared this idea was after a moment's pause hesitation, he said, I, I just don't find our business license fees to be out of line with the surrounding counties. And that said a couple of things to me. The first one is that he didn't really listen to the point of why I was suggesting this idea. But the second thing that was important about it is that it felt like to me like there was not an interest in helping the little guy and helping the ordinary citizen. And what that said to me was that kind of an idea was not going to be considered at the commission meetings back then. And if I wanted these kind of ideas to be something that were talked about, that I would have to get more involved. And so that was kind of the first time that I even thought about running for office here. And, um, and then I've, I've been involved in the GOP in the area as an officer and as a volunteer since I've been here. And um, so that's given me an opportunity to connect with people in different parts of the county and to, uh, to work on campaigns and to be aware of issues. And uh, I, I, I'm just a glutton for punishment. I go to a lot of meetings. I, sometimes I'm the only member of the public at a planning commission meeting. I go to uh, as many of the commissioner's meetings as I can. I don't know how many, maybe about half, give or take, I'm able to make it to. And BCTC meetings. And um, so as, as this election cycle was coming around, I, I looked at my own life to see if it was something that I could take on and decided that I would, uh, I'd like to throw my hat in the ring and put my, put my name out there and see if I could win the support of my neighbors uh, to, be, uh, to be a representative for them. And so that's, that's really why I'm running. Um, I've, like I mentioned, I've been asked several times, why do you think you're qualified? And so the first thing that I want to say is just to be clear, I don't believe that I'm anything special. I'm just an, another citizen like everybody else. And I don't believe that I'm entitled to anything. And I honestly believe that for me, that's one of the things that I love the most about our system, that a normal everyday citizen can step up and serve their community for a period of time. And that's what I'm looking to do. I don't have aspirations for this to become a, a path for my life. I just wanna help my community. And I feel like this is a, a, a way for me to do that. So here are a few of my qualifications. Um, when I was young, I was in the scouting program, and um, I'm an Eagle Scout. And so from a very young age, community service and civic involvement have been a part of my life. And on top of that, my, um, my mother worked for the town that, that we grew up in. And at times, one of her roles was to serve as a member or as a, as a secretary for the town council. And so it wasn't unusual for me to, to go to uh, town council meetings. I even then, uh, as a, as a, after I got married as a young man, I served a term as a parks and rec commissioner. But not a heavy duty job, but it allowed me to get familiar with the workings of local government and public service. Um, and you know, I uh, certainly leadership, my leadership training and the roles that I've had in, in my community and the amount that, and I care, you know, I care for my community, I care for my neighbors, and I want their lives to be better. But of course, those things, just desire and good intentions are not necessarily enough. And so, so in addition to serving as a Parks and Rec Commissioner, um, one of the other things that I think prepared me very well for this type of a, a role 
is the job that brought me here running the, uh, the Gold Hill Hotel. Well, when I was there, I had a staff of 15 to 20 employees that I managed, and our budget was well over a million dollars a year. And so while the county budget is still a substantial step up from that, uh, that's a pretty good sized budget and a fair amount of responsibility. Um, and I'd be happy to go into more detail if someone would like to see some of the numbers and things about the, uh, about the performance that I was able to, with my team, we were able to put in place there in that business. Um, I also, I feel that, so my wife and I right now have, have made some really strong efforts to implement fiscal responsibility and, and responsible financial practices in our own lives. Because I feel like integrity from our leaders demands that we don't ask of our neighbors anything that we're not willing to do ourselves. And especially with the potential downturn in the economy that may be coming with the uh, shutdown and how long it takes us to recover, I think we're going to need to be really cautious, careful, and wise about how we spend money and what we spend money on uh, as a county. I think we're in a better position than a lot of counties with the economic base out at TRI, but I think times may get pretty tough here and we're going to have some tough decisions to make. And so, so I've been doing that and I feel like it's really helped our household weather the storm. We've reduced our debt way down. We've reduced unnecessary expenses looked at ways to increase income and on, on both sides. We're trying to be as, as practical and as, um, as disciplined as possible with our finances. Um, I also have a background in communications. That's, that was, um, that was my major. I have an associate's degree. I don't have a, I'm about 20 units short of a, um, of a bachelor's. I went back uh, as an adult student and got really close, but haven't finished up yet. And at some point I imagine uh, maybe when the kids are a little older, I'll be able to finish that. But my background is in communications, and so that means I have a skill set uh, with my, pri my private sector and business building that I've done in, in negotiations and in marketing, and I feel like those skills will really be valuable for the, for the county. I can put them to work. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm independent. I don't owe anything to anyone. Uh, I, I'm an open book. My, my, I don't have secrets. My background, I'm a, I'm a Boy Scout, literally and figuratively. I'm happy to talk about uh, any, anything about my life. Um, with anyone and um, and I am fully independent to make decisions that I feel are in the best interest of the community. So with that in mind, um, I wanted to switch over and just talk a little bit about some Highland specific issues, um, but I wanted to open that up. And so if you want to think about um, some things that are on your mind, because I certainly have some ideas of my own and you're welcome to check out some of those ideas on my website. If you haven't, my website is clayforcommissioner.com. Don't forget that commissioner has two M's and two S's in it. And um, I've listed some of, my, um, some of my ideas or priorities. And then if you click on the, um, it's on the platform section of the website. And then I've gone into a bit more detail about some of my ideas. If you click on the read more uh, link, you'll see I, I, it's too much. I tend to talk too much. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> So um, with that in mind, just to talk about some of my general priorities and then get to get into some more specific Highlands related stuff, one of my top priorities is just to ensure that county conducts, the county conducts its business with transparency and fairness and with open communication. And um, I feel like, um, like those are things that we've made some strides in with, uh, with our, our current commission. I think we could go even further. And so... Um, uh, I'm, I'm fully in favor of moving public comment back to the beginning of commission meetings as well as at the end. I feel like most of the county officials that are there for the meeting are on the clock. They're on payroll while the meeting's happening. But if citizens show up, they have to sit through all of that business and they're taking their own time out. I feel like it, it sends the wrong message to relegate public comment to the end. I'm fine with limiting it to two minutes or three minutes a person so it doesn't drag on and on but I feel like that's a small way that we can show that our citizens come first. Um, I'm also in favor of continuing Zoom access or some other web streaming access to meetings so that those uh, of us who are spread out through, throughout the county have easier access and can participate and, and be part of the public process. Um, for me, it's another, another of my priorities is to hold the line against new major development. Um, we, in the county master plan, which I was involved in that process, went to many meetings with the master plan update. Um, we have one area of the county that's designated for a substantial size subdivision, and that's out in Painted Rock. The rest of the county is not suited for major development. 
And so I support the goals that are in the um, that are that are in the master plan, and those include infill development. Uh, and, and measured development, allowing keeping costs low, making it easy for people if they want to build, but doing so within the established communities that are there. So we don't overload our, our, uh, our utilities and our services and that we uh, were able to maintain the, the rural um, feeling that our communities have. So I mentioned lowering the business license fees. That's an idea that I'd really like to pursue. Um, Transportation is a big one. I believe that improved transportation would help each of our communities, especially our seniors, um, if they had more options. And the Senior Center right now is doing a great job. They got a small grant and have implemented a, a ride, a, a ride sharing, ride providing system, and it's and it's going very well. But that's somewhat tenuous. It relies on um, on some volunteers to do the driving, and uh, I'd like to see what we can do to to make that more permanent. I also feel that we could use some of the same equipment, shuttle buses or what have you, to help move people around Virginia City when we have big events or bring them up here and back down the hill so that um, the same equipment could be used for both. I feel like that's a really efficient use of equipment. And, and we may be able to ask the local hotels, the local, local establishments that benefit from that to pitch in um, so that it's not all taxpayer cost. Um, I feel it's important to 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 work with each of the communities to build a for to further build a sense of a sense of community, not to impose that, but to help whatever that means. And each of the communities has unique needs and character in the county, and so I'd like to just facilitate that and and help whatever that means. Um, I, I really feel it's important too to um, to work with our corporate citizens out in the Tahoe Arena Industrial Center and just remind them to be an active part of our community here. I know when they do community outreach, a lot of times their focus is to where many of their employees, most of their employees live into the Reno uh, Sparks area and maybe out to Fernley, but uh, we're a small county. We don't have a large population. It doesn't take that much to make a big impact. And I'll point to, for example, when our robotics team went to nationals last year, there was a, um, there was, uh, a need to help offset the travel cost. And uh, Commissioner Carmona reached out to uh, Switch and they immediately said absolutely no problem. They wrote a check to, to underwrite that and they were ready to do the same thing again this year, although um, the, the travel plans were put on hold. So anyway, um, I, I did mention also that I think we may be in for some tough times. And so it's not too early to start talking about how do we get more efficient? How do we protect essential services and try to maintain the level of service that we've had but uh, to be as efficient as possible so that there's not a need to raise taxes so that we can maintain tax level where it is and at the same time still have the services that we, uh, that we need. Um, and I believe there's some things we can do efficiency wise um, that, that would really go a long ways towards that. One, um, one example of that is I, I, I see a lot, of the, um, a lot of the county employees or officials have to sit through commission meetings until an item that they're responsible for or presenting on or, or interested in coming up. And I was thinking, well, there's got to be a way for us to implement a fairly simple paging system of some sort, especially for those who work right there in the courthouse so that they can be working and being productive and not have to sit through that meeting. And then as the agenda item or items that pertain to them come up, they could be paged or notified and they could come and join into the meeting. Um, and it's just a small thing, but I believe that that would allow us each of those offices to be able to do more with with smaller staff or with the same number of people if, po if possible and save us from having to uh, spend more money. So um, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, unfunded pension liabilities. I don't think it's a big issue yet, but I think it may be down the road. And that's something we really need to keep a close eye on. Uh, definitely, we, we want to take care of our, uh, our municipal employees who work hard and, and provide great service. At the same time, we want to make sure that we can actually fulfill those obligations to them and, uh, and not have that take so much of our budget that we're not able to, we get overwhelmed with, uh, with retirement debt. So, so those are some things that are really important to me. Um, and, uh, and as far as the Highlands uh, goes, you know, I, I'm somewhat familiar with some of the issues. I try to attend meetings that happen up there on a regular basis. I've attended, um, board meetings for uh, both of the HOAs and some of the other organizations, some of the town hall meetings, 
that have been held up there and listen to the um, the concerns that have been expressed by uh, by you folks out there. Um, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm aware of some issues with um, the county trying to take on. I, I believe that it's important if the county is available to take on responsibility and to provide good services for the Highlands as for every community. But what exactly those services are are different from community to community. And so I know there's been a lot of work done on the maintenance easement for taking over Cartwright. And uh, that's a little become a little more complicated than originally it was envisioned to be. But uh, I support that and I think it will continue um, and be able to take that out of the responsibilities of the HOA, the maintenance on, on that section of Cartwright. And so that it, uh, in theory, should lower or keep from, in, in, from the HOAs having to increase um, dues or assessments so that, so that the county can take that on. Uh, I'm also a, a supporter of the, um, the Highlands Community Center. And I know that the, the tentative plan that's in place right now may not be all the bells and whistles that eventually uh, we would like to have out there, but I think that having a dedicated space for the citizens of the Highlands to have their meetings and to, to get together, I think it's crucial. And, um, and I support that, that being continued, uh, assuming that the county isn't just walloped by the shutdown and the, and the reduced tax revenue. Um, what else? You know, water, water security is definitely on my radar. Um, I know that for me, you know, the population out here in the West continues to grow here in the state of Nevada. The, there, there is, there are more water rights on paper, much more than there are is actual water in and on the ground. And so I know that um, for most of you, uh, your wells are stable. There are a few people that are really concerned. They've, they've seen quite a drop in their in their water levels. And um, I, I was present for the presentation about that when the USGS and and some of the other agencies were there. And and so. Um, I know that the county is exploring bringing water from the Virginia City Gold Hill system um, out to the highlands. I am not in favor of, of municipal piping and, and, and stubbing that out to all of the residences and forcing people to, to hook up. I don't believe that that's the right approach. Uh, what I would rather see is a, is a balanced approach where the, if we've got the extra water and the county has the resources to do it, um, that we bring water to the highlands and, and then maybe to the fire station, let's say. Um, maybe there's a, a, a fire suppression pond that's built so we have some above ground water storage, or at least we have the municipal right there on site, maybe with a filling station. So if someone was to have an issue where their well ran dry or they were having issues, they could get water and bring it to their residence. They wouldn't have to come down off the hill or, or travel a long distance to have that water brought in. And that would provide security to the community, at least that the water's available, but it wouldn't impose the burden of having to hook up and the extra cost that's associated with having to hook up to municipal water. So to me, that's the right balanced approach. I'd love to hear um, if, if other people have different, uh, different takes on that. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. I know that um, as, as with Lockwood, I know you have some concerns with uh, that mail delivery can sometimes be a bit of a hassle and that if there are issues, then that means a trip down to Reno to take care of that. And, um, and I, I know that there, even just today on the, on the discussion board, there was a question out now, why is it again that we can't use the Virginia city post office and have that zip code cover us up here in the highlands as well. And I wish that that were a solution that was possible. Unfortunately, the facility that they have there just doesn't have the capacity to add in that many more uh, residences. And so uh, it's definitely something we can explore and see if it makes sense. Unfortunately, some of it's out of our control because the post office is the one that would have to build or acquire another facility um, close by. So uh, I'm aware of concerns that a lot of people to, uh, in the Highlands have expressed to me about potential development to the north. I'm um, talking about Sunny Hills and some of those. And uh, I'm keeping an eye on those. I believe strongly that our um, that our master plan protects us from a lot of that. And as a commissioner, as I, I have as a, as a private citizen, I've gone down and I've testified in front of the legisl legislature for or against bills that I feel strongly about. And I would definitely keep watchdogging that 
because that's really the route that, that the developers would have to go to get around the protections that we have. They'd have to go through the legislature um, and, uh, and, and get them to override us in some way. And so I'm not in favor of that. I realize um, there's discussion about roads cutting through either east or west or north and south. A lot of concerns about that. And so I'm definitely open to hear where people are with those concerns. Certainly, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge to have the county broken up into different areas. But at the same time, what we're balancing on the other side is not wanting to make it so easy for traffic to come through that we don't no longer feel like a, a rural area. I mean, that's what has attracted us out to this area. And I, I lived in the Highlands for a short time. I rented a room out there um, from someone for about four months. And so I really appreciated the solitude and the, uh, you know, the wide open space. And, and I'm dedicated to preserving that. So I think I'd like to open up. I've talked more than I wanted to. Um, thank, thank you for listening.